Hello everyone and welcome back to another video looking at Excel VBA. So in today's video we're going to be looking at some script that allows you to look at a given folder and return in a list all of the files that are available in that folder. Uh, one particular use for doing this and what I've used it for um, previously is say we've got uh, a number of files within a folder and we want to combine the contents of all of those files together into a master spreadsheet. This would, or this script we're now going to look at would obviously give you the ability to identify each of those files and you could obviously build upon the script we're going to look at today to then extract data from each of those files in turn. So we'll jump straight into it. Uh, what you can see on the screen is I've got both my Excel uh, sheet, so you can see on the left here, so we can see obviously the output of this code. And on the left, we've already inserted a module into our VBA panel, uh, so we can start doing our script. If it's the first uh, VBA uh, video you've watched, and uh, maybe you need to get um, familiar with like inserting a module or, or anything aspect around VBA, you can check back on the channel and you'll find a playlist with dedicated videos uh, starting from the basics and building up to where we are today. So you might want to look at that now or check back on that at the end of this video. But either way, the quickest way to do it is simply to go Alt F11 to bring up your window and you can go insert and module uh, to get to where we are today. So what we've got is a folder I've created and you can see I've got a number of different files in here and these are actually just different or previous videos that we've done on the channel and I just found a selection of them and dropped them into this folder so we could use it as an example and you can see simply we've got this basic folder path here what's going to be very key to what we're trying to do because this is the file path we're going to use or feed into our script to be able to pull back all of these files. So what we need to do, well simply we're just going to start coding. So we're going to do a subroutine here so we're going to call this sub and let's call it get um, all files. Again, the name is not important, it's just give it something obviously what's gonna be meaningful to you. And we're gonna be using a couple of new objects in here. Um, what, again, you don't need to worry about too much about what they are, and I won't go into much detail about them at all because ultimately it's just the code that you're after. Uh, if you want to obviously look into them more, you can by all means have a Google and that'll give you as much information and text that you want uh, to read as much as you like. So first we're going to uh, define our variables. So the first we're going to do is dim O, F, S, O as object. So this is, these are objects that are going to enable us to like connect to uh, folders and obviously the folder itself. I'm going to call O folder as folder or as object, sorry. Get myself confused as object. And the last one we've got is O file as object. So again, without going into too much detail, but you can probably kind of see, ignoring OFSO, uh, we can see O folder as object and O file as object. Simply put, they are what they are. So a folder is going to, we're going to be defining it as an actual folder and then the file being an actual file. And you'll see that it allows us then to interact with the properties of the file as we go on and in turn, obviously the folder as well. Next one we're going to do is do dim i as integer. This simply just gives us the ability to create a loop so that we can list every file in turn on a separate row. So nice and uh, familiar stuff that we previously looked at. And the last variable we need is dim s file path as string. So for this one, s file path is simply just going to be a string or variable I'm going to store the file path. Um, you, you could just hard code this string into the actual code, but I often, well, I always like to do it as a separate variable, just that way if anything changes or we need to make a dynamic path, again, it's just separate entities so we can obviously manage that as we need. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go s file path so we can define what file path contains um, our file, what is our file path. So I'm just literally gonna just go back to this uh, explorer we had here. I'm gonna click in the top part here and copy out this file path. Once I've done that, I can get that out of the way again. And simply, I'm just going to paste that in there within those two quotes, because obviously it's a string. So we've now said, obviously, to our code, this is the folder. So this is the path. And we've included the actual folder name in there as well. Enter a few rows. So the next thing we're going to do is define our objects that were set up in these variables at the top here. So the first one we're going to do is set uh, OFSO as, oh no, uh, equals and create object, open brackets, and in script, we're gonna do scripting dot file system object. So you're probably now being able to see what FSO stands for. It's file system object. So obviously just that small uh, uh, abbreviation, should we call it. 
So this is where we need to now create an object so we're able to sort of, the code can understand what we're talking about. Uh, and if we go on to this next one, actually, if we go set O folder equals O FSO dot get folder, open brackets, S file path, close brackets. And am I happy that I've done that correctly? So O F S O dot get folder S file path. Yeah, so we've got the here. So this is where we're sort of defining uh, our file system object. And this one here, once we've got this aspect defined, we can then say, okay, we want this to obviously get the file folder. So obviously it's defining the folder as an actual object. So S file path here is obviously going back and looking at our file path here. So this is what I mentioned earlier that you could hard code this file path into there, um, but obviously I've kept it separate so we can obviously manage this separately if we need to. So once we've got those two aspects done, next thing we're gonna do is now look at our loop. And what we're gonna do is, uh, you, well, actually, not this, not the loop. We're going to do the integer. So the integer is obviously where we're going to define where we're going to store our values. So first thing, I'm going to go i equals 2. And that will become more clear in a minute why I'm starting at 2 rather than at 1. And now this is where we're going to do our for loop. So we're going to go for each uh, o file. So basically for each file in o folder dot files. Enter. And then the next thing we need to do at the end here would be next O file. So ooh, if I could spell my abbreviation correctly, so we've got O file there. So what this is saying is for each file in folder, then obviously we can now execute, execute some code. So what this will do is it will go into our folder, it will look at the very first file that it sees, it will execute this code. Once it's completed, it will then go on, or it will execute the code we now put in here. Once it's done that, it'll then go on to the next file and it'll keep go iterating for each file within that folder until there are no more files to go through, at which point the code or the loop will end and so will our code as it stands at the moment. So for each file in folders, all we simply want to do is we want to go to sheet one. So if you refer to sheet one here and we're gonna just put it into column A. So for each file, we want to go to sheet one dot cells and we're gonna go into cell i, because obviously i, what we defined up here, is gonna be our row number, what's going to change, and one for the column number, dot value equals o file dot name. Hit enter, and all we're gonna do here is now go i equals i plus one, and now we can look and our code. So what our code is basically saying, for every file that's in this folder, we want to put that file name in uh, column A. Uh, so that'll then list them in here. And once it's done that, we then want to take our value of I, and we're starting with the number two. We simply want to say, I is now gonna be equal to I plus one. What, again, simply all it means is it's gonna post our file name here in row two. And then once it comes around to the next file, it's then gonna be loaded ready to paste that into row three and so on. It'll keep sequentially going down through the rows. So rather than obviously overwriting the file name continuously over the same cell. So I think we've got everything we need in here. So all I'm gonna do is select within our subroutine and hit F5, and you can see that obviously it's now populated that with all of the files that are available in our folder. And we can now bring our file, um, our actual explorer across, and we can see, yep, yeah, we've got six files here, and it's brought across the six files as desired. Obviously we left this one at the top here blank, so we could just call this a uh, file name. And that way, by obviously starting in row two every time, we're not gonna be overwriting the file name either. So we could just tidy this up ever so slightly. Uh, go, go, like that, and then go view. Uh, let me turn off grid lines as well. So if we now delete this, you can now see if we now hit F5 over here, it's gonna keep continuously populating with all those files in that folder. Just to go one bit step further, we've obviously looked at this before, but if you're new as well, we can go to the developer tab, and go insert a button. Let's do that, and we'll go Okay, we'll associate that macro or this button with the macro get all files. And then we could just edit the text as well. So let's call this update. Perfect. And then let's just move that there. So move here. And then yeah, every time we now go and push that update button, obviously it's gonna update those files for us as well. As you can see, it's gonna continuously do. And the benefit of doing this uh, through the code is obviously it main ensures that this list keeps updated. So if we were to go back to our file, 
file explorer. I think I've still got it open, not closed it. Yep, there it is. So rather than having our six in here, let's say we remove the last two files. So we've now only got four files in there. Obviously, if we now remove this, these, this date from here and go update, you can see that it's now only going to pull those four files. And alternatively, if we were to add more files into here, so let's say, let's go and copy all of these and paste them into there and do it again. So we've got a lot more files now. We should have 12, I believe. And now we can get rid of this, run this one more time, and you can see it's now going to pick up all those files. So it just enable us, enables us to have this dynamic solution so we're always ensuring we're picking up every file that is available in that folder. Um, so there we go, and that is as simple as that. And it's really useful code, and as I said earlier, you could now build upon this code. So if you wanted to execute something additional here, so you now wanted to get some content from each of those files, it's in this space that you can now obviously define what you want to copy and store it here rather than just doing the name or in addition to the name as well. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to give the video a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by me because it shows me the content you'd like to see more of, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm to ensure that more people are able to find this video and other videos on our channel. And if you haven't already, maybe like this is the first time that you found one of our videos, or you have watched our videos in the past and you're still not subscribed to the channel, please do also do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification button as well. That way you'll be notified of all of our new videos as and when they come out. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.